in the event that we're, you know, we're leveling those scales and the house is given to the wife, for example, in that case, if they owned it together, does the wife have to buy out the spouse or does that just go as long as the scales are equitable? I'll give you the lawyer answer of it really depends. Yeah, for the most part, let's say me and you are married, you left your husband, you're now with me, <laughs> but we didn't work out. <laughs> so if we had a house together and you're basically buying me out of the equity, let's yeah. say the equity is 100,000, what you would do in order to keep that house was pay me half of that equity. So you'd be paying me $50,000, but you'd get to keep the house, I'd get my 50,000 because that's all that my 50% interest is. Yeah. Now, yeah. let's say we also had a bank account that has $100,000 in it and you have a hundred thousand dollars in equity. Now for you, that might not be a good deal, you know, to take all the equity and I take the bank account because that leaves you in a state of yeah. no liquidity. A lot of it goes into thinking, where does the person have to end up? What do they need for expendable cash? And then you start doing that division because on paper, a hundred thousand dollars of equity in the house is the same as, you know, me walking away with a hundred thousand dollars in a bank account. But how that actually works in real life is very, very different. When when one person is typically buying the other person out, there is some sort of exchange. It could be that there's a balance. You know, we've had people say, well, I really am attached to my retirement account and I want to keep everything in my retirement account. You know, a dollar within a retirement account is that the same as a dollar cash. And there's usually some sort of equation that goes on in calculation to figure out what that value is. It's so fluid. And when you're coming to your own agreement, and this is where your first response of settling, when you're able to settle instead of throwing it up to a judge, yep. you have the ability to be as flexible as you want. Whereas a judge, they're pretty much going to go split everything. I don't care if it costs you more in taxes. I don't care yep. if it costs you more at the end of the day, split it. Usually if one person doesn't buy the other out of the home, what would typically happen is the home sold. Good for yep. your business because now yep. you get to put it on the market. <laughs> but where that's bad for the couple is that then they're paying your realtor fees, additional costs to get it upkeep and ready for sale. If there's a buyout, you're not doing that. So with that hundred thousand, your commission that would come out of that, let's just call it, you know, a $20,000 yeah. commission. If we're selling that's coming off the top. So now yeah. I'm not walking away with 50. I'm only walking away with 40. That's where it really comes down to what works out best for both parties involved. Then when you look at the rest of the marital assets, how does that all play out where somebody doesn't walk away just house poor? 